Hi, so I don't know what I'm doing this so late, but I just thought that I'm going to do a little bit of painting. So I thought I share some process with you guys. And today, uh, I mean tonight, I'm only going to do some value study. So hopefully it's not going to take too long. Let me try to get it guessings ready here okay let me set up the paint real quick let me clean my palette a little bit it's pretty messy from my last painting I'm just gonna just wipe this clean so I'm going to do two value study and I'm not going to do a full color painting. It's pretty late. I don't want to go on too late. But I think it's very, very important that I you know, get that process in first. Um, the past few paintings, I haven't been doing value study. And I still think it's a very, very important part of the process. So I'll be sharing with you guys as well. Okay, so for people here in Europe, you guys are in a good time morning for you guys. But if you are in the US, I don't know what are you still in doing up. So <laughs> anyways, let's just get started. Uh, my webcam is I let my son borrow the webcam. So I'm not able to show my face today. Hopefully that's okay with you guys. So I have two paintings. I have two reference actually. So this one and this one, I'm going to do them both. So what's really important is that this is going to, both of them actually are going to be just value studies. So, okay, let's just get started. It's been so long. Okay, so for this one, just gonna do a real quick drawing. So this is uh, Kiri Majaro. I remember I mentioned that this brand before. It's a very decent paper. It's great for just doing some quick value study. Okay, so this is in Leavenworth in Washington. I was there the past week. Uh, have a little bit of time off, unplug, which is great. I was planning to do some plein air, but it was really, really hot. So I, you know, I scratched that idea. A super hot day is usually not a good idea to do plein air for watercolor. Okay, so just very, very quick drawing. So the house is going to be here, okay? And in my next video, I'm probably going to share with you the process on getting the composition there. But because when I took the photo, I already had the composition in mind. So there's a couple houses, barns and stuff. Uh, I'm just going to do a very, very quick drawing on that. Okay. Let's see if I can try to get this to be a little bit lighter actually okay so there we go okay so here's the horizon line it's very rough so i'll say it's a roof here again the, the whole point of value study is to simplify what we see into a readable a very easy to read shape, big shapes. So that when you are doing your, your color version of the painting, you will be able to stick with your plan and able to do a very simple and have a good readability for your painting. There's another house here. Okay, so just a couple roof and stuff. Okay, I, haven't, I can even do a little bit of shading. It doesn't really matter just to kind of 
make it read a little bit better. So when I'm painting, it'll be a little bit less confusing. Underneath here, and it's all shadows. Okay, so there's some fences and stuff. Okay, there's like a tractor or something. I'm just gonna ignore that. Actually, it might be a good idea to paint that in. It's a nice yellow tone there. Hi, uh, sorry, I haven't been <laughs> looking at the chat. There's quite a few chats message there but thank you guys for being here and Sarah says she's new here welcome and my channel has been growing quite a bit lately all thanks to you guys seriously if it wouldn't happen without you guys and I think within you know maybe a couple months a month or two hopefully I'll be able to reach hundred thousand subscriber can you believe that I start from zero start from zero subscriber and I remember when I got my first thousand subscriber I was so happy it was so exciting and fast forward a couple of years I'm almost at 10,000 I mean yeah 10,000 that is amazing okay so here we go, very, very simple. And I got the, you know, there's a back heel side on the back. It's going to be an interesting painting because I do like the color a lot, but when it comes to the shape, it might be a little bit tricky. No, this is, this is the value study. I'm going to do value study. This, yeah, this uh, live stream is all about value study. I'm not going to do the color version. value study is a very relaxing thing to do okay so first thing i want to invite you to do is to kind of squint your eyes with me at the photo so you can kind of tell that we have you know we have pretty much three big major shape here the sky the back heel and the grass the ground the the heel is darker okay the the sky and the ground is pretty similar but i think for this painting i'm going to make the sky a little bit lighter just to make things to read a little bit better okay so let's just get started uh, so i'm going only going to use one color which is cobalt black it's the point of the value study I'm waiting for this scroll brush to go out of commission. This I think is almost done. And after that, I'm phasing out all my animal hair brush. I find synthetic brush just as good. And they are cheaper. And also, no animals harm for my painting. That's good to know. Hi, you're from Korea. Anya Seo. I think that's all the Korean I know. Anyaseo and Salanhe. Salanhe says, I love you. I remember that. Okay. Yeah, I have a young cousin who is a huge K pop fan. Okay, anyways. Chrissy, hi. Nihao. It's been so long. Okay. So I'll start with middle value the sky. I'm just going to leave it white. Okay, even though if I do the color version, I'm going to paint blue sky and some clouds, but for this I'm going to keep it mostly just white. So the white of the paper in your finished color version is your first wash. Okay, so I'm going to refer back to it when I'm painting the color version. So let's go through this first. So the middle session, the, the background mountains and all the trees, is going to be one single value. It's the middle value. So here's what I'm going to do. So the middle value is going to be the background. It's, it's going to be the, the ground. So the ground is very similar to the sky, but I'm still going to darken it a little bit. 
and the third layer which is going to be the dark is going to be it's going to be the background mountains and the shadow of the house so as i'm doing it hopefully you will be able to see that so hi kevin so the purpose of value study is to simplify what you see so that when you are doing your color version your final version you have a map this is like a map like a plan for you to use so when you are painting your color version you have this very simple shape to look at because painting is all about shapes it's all about painting the big shapes and the readability because when you guys looking at the reference right now it's very very small and my guess is when you are painting with reference you don't paint with reference that small but it's very important that when you you know you can you're able to tell the overall big shape of the painting with just that so you know, get some value study and it's very important plus you only have one color to worry about which is black and I'm using black, you can use pinks, gray, neutral tint, whatever you desire. But the important thing is to simplify what you see. Okay. Okay. So here we are at the house. So I'm going to just use the tip very loosely, paint in the dark. Okay, the shadow and this is the the middle value okay so a lot of these we're going to go over it again to make them darker but for now this should be enough we'll paint this first okay we'll leave the wall of the house light i'm gonna switch to a smaller brush just so that i won't need to struggle that much okay so here we have some barns, some houses and stuff and uh, just okay how do you know how much water to put in your brush practice <laughs> it's it's all about practice and getting to know the consistency and like I mean, there there are few t there's you know there are times that what am I what was I going to say? I mean, I did give you know people some hints sometimes about you know how to kind of look at your palace and you can kind of judge do you have enough. But it really comes down to just getting used to the property of watercolor. Because so right now you see that the water kind of the paint kind of leaving some streak it doesn't puddle up that means you are at a good consistency okay because okay, if you are really really wet see there's a huge puddle here that's not what you want okay it's going to get too wet so dry your brush a little bit add some more paint there's already some water in my brush so this is this is good enough okay see they're breaking up they're receding Versus his huge puddle there is going to be too wet. So, so there are a few ways to kind of check on that, but then at the same time, you need to be get used to it. It's kind of like driving. Like I always say, it's you know it's kind of like driving when you are just starting to learn how to drive or you know riding a bicycle you're you're focusing on all the technical things how to balance when to pedal and things like that but as you are getting used to it you are not thinking about those anymore it's like a second nature you just get on the bike you start pedaling things start going you don't even really think about how to balance anymore because you're so good at it next thing you know you start looking at the scenery you start to think about where you're going 
you don't really need to think about all these things anymore. So that's the same. That's the same thing as mixing different consistency and mixing the colors, which is very very important because in the beginning you might still trying to get used to it. That's why I recommend simple palette and. For learning different consistency, consistency of mixture, doing value study is very very helpful because it's going to be it's going to be very useful for you. You don't need to worry about color. All you need to worry about is mixing consistency. So practice mixing. Okay. So now I'm using a smaller brush. I'm just you know going over to the paint directly. So you can tell this is a lot drier. Okay. So if I just go over like this, see, you can see it's a lot dry already. So it's already kind of dry. So it's going to be a subtle difference, but.、Uh, I am going to paint some dark shadow here. So what happened is the cloud roaming, and it's blocking part of the sun. So we're getting some cloud shadows up on the hill. Now, in the color version, I might try to do a wet on duet, just to get a little bit softer edges. But for just the value study, I don't think I need to bother with it too much. Again, the point is really just to get the big shape. Okay, some. Okay, so some dark here. Okay, and the darker and drier your mixture is, the harder it is to give it a big area wash. So that's something that. You should be able to tell. Okay, so squint your eyes again. See if you can see what values merges together. So the trees in the front, there are a little bit of value differences, but they are close enough. I'm just gonna paint them all together. Okay. Okay, I'll leave a little bit of light there, but I'll grab the dark end here. Okay, some more other trees here. I have tiny little bit of shadow underneath here. Those are houses, shadow of the trees, whatever. Just a little hint of something here. Okay, so we'll bring this shadow down here and into the house. Okay, so we got this shadow in down here. Bring that dark in to the house. Actually, I'm just gonna paint that dark as well. Connect that into the house as well. That's what you want to do when you are painting the color version too. Okay, connect the shape. They can be different color, but the value will be very similar. Okay, really dark shadow here and here as well. Okay, so one thing I want to do is that this I don't want to leave it white exactly. I want to actually give it a middle value, and I should have done that on my first wash, but I forgot. So I will just grab 
a little bit more watery mixture and just paint it over here like that okay so it's not going to be as bright okay leave it mostly to the roof this roof actually can be a little bit darker too so this two roof will pop up okay okay so we got decent variety of value already okay. just fill those in let me simplify it just a little bit more okay it's a little hut here let me paint that in as well dark here okay so bring some of the tree down a little bit there's some of the bushes and tree are closer to us so they're not all resting on the horizon so bring some of those down here So I am thinking to give it a few cows here. Now there's there's no cow in the photo, but I remember seeing some cows there. So uh just some very simple shape here. You know, tiny little cows. Okay. So it don't look like anything, but you know, when you kind of put them together like that, it'll look like cows with the right color too. So mostly the back will be kind of flat like that so they're kind of grazing there and maybe one here just to space them out just a little bit okay a little tail here good morning from Denmark hi okay Okay, so this is actually nice. This kind of give it a little bit more sense of space and scale reference. So it's quite nice. Okay, so, so let me actually there's some fences and stuff. So I think it's a good time for me to paint that in. also give me a chance to kind of extend that dark shape out okay again very very simple okay so I mean it, this actually looks fine as is I'm actually quite happy with it but I think to kind of echo what's going on in the back here maybe I can do like a cloud shadow here as well I'm wondering if I should do that though yeah so maybe I will I'm, I'm right now I'm thinking because this will require me to invent something that's not that's not really there in the photo so some fences and stuff love the cow thanks so a little bit of 
Okay. Mm. Maybe just a little hint here then. Let me do a quick test here. Bushes and stuff. A little bit of cloud shadow here. Actually, I kind of like it without it. Yeah, this is just kind of repeating shape, so never mind. That's a bad call, but also that's actually kind of a point of value study. You you know, you get to experience without doing the, the real thing, so whatever. I'm just gonna change that into some patch of grass and stuff. There we go. Yeah, so you know, it's a good it's a good chance to do that. Then I think when you're doing value study, you are free to kind of experience and try different things and see if it looks good overall. If it looks good black and white, chances are it's gonna look good in in the color. And you know, the only difference is, is that. The only difference is, is that you know you when you're doing color, you will need to change that into you, you'll need to match the value. But the value is all here, so okay. This actually kind of look good as is. We don't need to do any cloud shadow in the front. Let me try to detach this paper so I can. Paint another one underneath. Okay. Good morning in England. Good morning. Okay. So here, our first value study. And I'm going to keep this. So when I do the color version, I will refer back to this one. Okay, so our second is this. This is a rather interesting one because I was kind of walking around where I live and I saw this scenery and I, I really like the lighting because there's a huge cloud shadow and uh, at the at the mountains behind, but it's so hazy, so it's still kind of light. But the house, the highlights on the house it really caught my eyes. So I'm going to I'm going to try to see if I can resolve this into into a painting. So just going to do a, a an, again a quick drawing. So we actually only see a little bit of the sky in this one, which is which is fine. I think it might be interesting to kind of see like a reverse. Usually we got a light sky and a darker ground this time is almost reversed we have a really brightly lit bottom and a kind of like a dark you know, dark background dark ish so i took some beautiful pictures thank you i mean when i'm nowadays when i'm taking photos i you know i have in mind that if i can turn that into a painting so I try to kind of compose my image that way. Okay, there's one 
hitting here. Okay. I am not too crazy about this big, huge tree though. I feel like it's competing with the house. So what I'm going to do is probably just shrink that tree down, cut that tree down a lot. Okay, so that. I don't need to deal with that. Okay, so there's some fences and stuff. I'm still not quite sure if I am going to paint all that because it's going to be a little bit of pain painting around all the whites so I might just leave it as dirt and grass and not worry about the fence I think the fence is going to be too distracting it's my painting I do whatever I want okay the owner of the house or the place they're not gonna see this painting and throw their fist at me so there's some trees and stuff. <laughs> there's where's that tree? Okay. Okay. So just some scribble. Okay. So I'm going to get to the house again. This is going to be like the focus of our painting. No, I'm I'm eyeballing all of these. I'm not drawing perspective and stuff. Just I think eyeballing them will be enough. Okay, a little hut here. It's a very nice, brightly lit roof, and there's. Another house, I mean, another tree here. Okay, another tree here. But there's some white spot behind the tree. I think those are houses too. Okay, and here is pencil out of lid. Here is another house. But what's interesting is that this house is actually not really well lit here. I don't know if it's a cloud shadow or just something. Yeah, the sun is coming from the left, so this house is facing us, so it's not getting that much light. It's mostly ambient light. Okay. Let me get a sip of water. Okay, so I think this is good. A little bit of fences and stuff. Okay, so this is a little bit of... Just a little bit of a heel, like a little bump up there. So... So... I can do a little bit of fences here, though. Okay. Okay, again, very, very loose. So I'm going to take a huge brush for, for, for the background. Okay, and uh, a big mop brush. Okay, so look at this. This is really, really watery. This is, you can see the huge puddle. So I need a lot more paint to start my first wash. For, again, first wash for the value study is the middle value. So again, let's try to, let's squint our eyes a little bit. We see the huge dark shape of the background. Okay, it was, you know, merges with all the trees and even the roof of the house and stuff. Okay. As until we hit the ground, then we start to see the bright color. So most of the ground is actually going to be light value. So we're just painting the middle value, which is this huge chunk here. And then we'll come back in with some dark and, you know, separate some of the trees in the middle ground and the dark of the house. So right now, I am going to 
just start with the background okay nice big brush so i can paint that big shape with ease don't use a tiny little brush and just okay a little bit of evergreen trees on top okay a little bit of tiny little bit of hint of that but for the most part just get that big wash in my painting i do what i want love it artistic license yeah that's our painting we do whatever we want right okay so this middle value is huge okay don't worry about the tree don't worry about the house okay all we really need to leave the highlight is this part okay this part and maybe some bright light here okay but for the rest of it let's just paint it all in Okay. A little bit lighter on this roof here, but again, for the rest of it, we can just paint those in. Okay, just be a little bit more careful around this area. Okay, and uh, we leave some random highlights here and there. Here we Here's some houses in the background. Okay. Little sparkles, fine. Just don't paint around too much. This paper dry a little bit faster, so I need to work rather quickly. I think, I think there's like a house in the back, so I'll leave a little bit of white here. Okay, so we stop down here. Okay. And we got a little bit of shadow down here and a little bit here, but we have some bright spot here, like the grass and the bushes. Some of them are really well lit. So there's some arc here and a little bit here okay and now let's change a brush here Let me change to my versatile and before it is dry okay so try to get some value down here there's a tree and it's sitting right here and I just paint some more Happy little trees, tree trunks stuck here. Okay, and we can get some of those shadows and stuff in. Just here, there's, just paint that big shadow shape here. Okay, we can come back in and paint the fence. The fence are darker, so not to worry about those. Okay. Okay. Okay, it just looked like a mess. It doesn't look like anything right now. It just look like a big blob of shape. But within that shape, we will be able to get some interesting stuff out, you know, once we once we get some dark stuff in. So I'm doing a little bit of wet on wet stuff here. There's still some subtle cloud shadow there and I kind of want to hit those in. So we still have a little bit of the the wetness here. So I am taking advantage of this stage. I'm going to spray a little bit of water just to keep it wet a little bit longer. There's probably like thousands of evergreen trees back there. It's quite a sight. But if I want to paint them all, it will be madness. So I'm just going to hint a little bit, giving a little bit texture like these, wet onto wet. And then you start to see, oh, look, at, there's a bunch of trees in the hill. You're from India. 
Welcome. Watercolor seems to be pretty popular in India as well. I, I got quite a few people, quite a few subscribers there from India. And I know some good artists from India too. There's, uh, I, I have a friend who is a wonderful photographer. He's from India too. Okay. Okay. So some cloud shadows, some tr some hints of trees and stuff. Okay, but still, this is rather fade back. Okay, once we get to the dark, you will see what I mean here. Okay, so this is relatively dry. I am going to start painting the dark. Okay, now look at how dark that is, okay? Just to show you how dark this is. Look at that, okay? Immediately this mark pops out. So, what I'm going to do is to paint the shadow. The roof is casting a cast shadow here. So, paint that in. Immediately, you start to see the depths. You start to see the light. Okay. Some shadow here. And... Actually, this whole value is close enough. I'm just going to paint it as one value. Okay, just so make it a little bit simpler. Oh, what happened to John? Sorry, I wasn't reading the comment. What happened to what happened to John? Somebody fill me in. Just gonna ping some trees here. All oh, fires in California. Yeah, uh, that was that's very bad. Every, every year, there's some fires in California. It was it's getting worse. And COVID is also hitting hitting California very badly. So I hope if you're in California, I definitely hope you're okay. And yeah, it's not easy. I think time like these, we are facing a lot of challenges. Yes, John, I hope, yeah, everything will be fine, and best wishes to you. And okay, some fans here as well. So right now I'm painting the dark, okay? So there's still some light from the tree, so I'll leave them on paint. It can get very complicated very fast, so our job is try to simplify them. Okay, so this connect with this tree right here. Okay, there are times that I need to make some judgment, like even though it can look very similar value to the background, I can make particular trees a little bit darker just so that it comes forward. Okay, this tree is definitely a lot darker as well. And try 
trying to simplify my brush stroke and shape as well. Okay, give it a little bit of the dark here as well. Some windows. I like where you're going with this. Uh, I'm still trying to find my way as well. <laughs> so I don't know how it turns out, but we can already start to see the light. Okay, as soon as I put the dark in, this pops out. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> this pops out. So we can already see the light here. Okay. Okay, so this tree. Okay, we cut down this tree a little bit, but still let's make it a little bit higher though just so that we don't have all the tree looking the same okay. okay so some trees here every a bunch of pine trees evergreen trees the washington is known for okay So Okay, there we go. So yeah, I who who read my story of people flipping <laughs> flipping me <laughs> giving me middle finger in the in the middle of the road here. It was on my way to this place to live in words and I was just driving in the middle of the road and then there's there's two uh, it's funny I got one person do that to me when I am you know when I am driving to this place I have another person do that to me as I leave the place and like I don't know if it's coincidence or something. They're both driving a pickup truck. Okay. So I think what, what happened is... At first I saw... I don't know if I was driving too slow and blocking their way. But there's also cars in front of me. Right? So... There's also people in front of me. So I don't think I am blocking it because I'm driving around the same speed as the the car in front of me so all i can think of and they cannot see me because they're behind me so it's not really like they see me and they don't like how i look or something so they just drive by me and give me a little finger and i think what happened is they saw my bumper sticker and i was a supporter of andrew yang <laughs> and he's not running for president anymore he's out so anyways I'm I don't want to go go political and stuff. So I have, you know, I'm I like injury and so I put a bumper stick on there. I didn't took that down even though he's not running for president anymore. And I think somebody just see that and he doesn't like him or something and he just started flipping me off. What's kind of odd is that like First of all, I don't know why people would hate Andrew because I think he's a very nice guy. But aside from that, I think even if you don't like a specific candidate, I don't go around and start giving people middle finger just because I saw some sort of bumper sticker on, you know, on on the cars that you know putting whoever they're supporting just because I don't like them so it's sort of interesting it's just, there's just so much anger and, and hate in, in, in the world right now I just, just I just feel really sad about this and so anyways come back home do some paintings hopefully you know get some beauty in the world and find some joy there I know, right? It's like, and I think just overall, our our society just getting really, really polarized. It's like 
people who don't support what you support, they must be your enemy or, or something like that. And you know, there I mean there are times that I have to sit down with friend and just kind of discuss our difference and agree to disagree and stuff. And you know, and I know some genuine people. They are nice people. They're good people. They just you know have different idea than me. Anyways, just a little side story. I think this is this is actually at the end. I feel okay now. This is really light, so it's fine as is. But I think I'm just going to give it a slight value here, just to kind of give it a little bit of separation. Very light value, though. Yeah, so just very light value here. So again, I'm not gonna do the fence here. Just not really necessary. Okay, but just some very light wash, just to give the grass a little bit of tone here. Okay, still very light and. Yeah. Thank goodness for painting. Like honestly, I you know whoever you know, like if you're here, I really don't. I'm not gonna say I don't care. That sounds kind of mean, but I really don't mind if your political view is different than mine. I'm I'm not even political myself. I I rarely think about political stuff. Like you know, just this year, I I really like Andrew, and that's that's all. <laughs> Now he's not running. I don't. I don't even know who to vote for and stuff. I mean, I'm probably still gonna vote, but it's 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 kind of like four years ago. Oh uh, yeah, back to the same thing. Like the both parties kind of feels the same. And I mean, there's you know always that lesser of two evils scenario. I'm like ah, it's just you know feels kind of depressing. But anyways. Let's not let's not go to that. Let's not go to that. Okay. So the grass here, while it's still wet, let me give it a little bit of just you know, a couple of textures. Wet on too wet. Yeah, I'll definitely vote. I'm just yeah. Not gonna not gonna lie. Be lying. You know, I I don't want to lie, but I just don't feel as excited. <laughs> about that anymore but yeah like please vote if you can vote if you're in the u.s please vote your vote matters and especially now it's getting harder to vote especially in person because of the pandemic and stuff but okay so i think this is this is it i actually like the light a lot and I think this will be a tricky one when I'm actually doing the color version because like a lot of the separations needs to be done with color so there's a lot of similar values here and there's a lot of similar values here so like the house and the tree they are pretty much the same value so when I'm painting the color version, the only thing that's going to separate it too will be the color. And like I didn't paint the light of the tree, but there are definitely some like really light tree colors here. And that's really subtle. That's between this value and the white of the paper here. So it's going to be a little bit tricky when I'm actually starting to paint it so this one will be a lot more tricky the other one is going to be a lot simpler like the scale is going to play a big role here like the little cows here and the houses here Let me just erase some of the pencil line make it a little bit cleaner okay and we got a little bit more sky here so this feels open this feels kind of nice this one feels a little bit more intimate because you you're a little bit closer to the house 
and you get to see a little bit more details of the fences and stuff and you see that little little bit of the light encompassed by this whole mountain range and space here so um, i think i'll enjoy both both painting here so i will be painting the color version i don't know maybe tomorrow i'm not quite sure yet but next wednesday hopefully i'll be sh able to share with you the process and i kind of want to talk about my my experience visiting the place and picking out a subject to paint again i was wanted to do some plein air but it's super hot it's just not going to be a pleasant experience so i just i just just kind of scratched the idea just took some photos instead so again this painting is from that photo okay you guys can probably tell like the big shape is there okay the values are there now all you need is some colors and this one this okay all right thank you guys so much thank you for listening to my ranting and stuff well what will you do to the left corner of the second one this one this is just dirt it's just dirt color so it's actually very similar value to this one again i'm not going to paint paint the fence because it's going to really obstruct the view so this one will just i'll just paint some dirt colors and again the whole foreground is actually very very light so the the only thing the only difference will be i will separate them with colors that will be it so i just didn't paint this one because i want to separate the grass and the ground and that's pretty much it yeah i think i might invent some shadows here just to have because the light is kind of coming from the left and a little bit from the back so yeah i might invent some shadows here and there just to give it a little bit more sense of the light direction but okay 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 thank you guys so much uh i will see you guys again very very soon have a great night great day wherever you are <laughs>